Hey guys, um, I hope you guys are having an awesome Friday. Mine was very productive. I finally did the second load of laundry that I was supposed to do a couple days ago. Um, I am currently making myself something quick to eat for dinner. My boys are with my husband. They went to the park and get some ice cream. So yummy yummy for me. I am taking advantage and just uh, redecorating the living room a little bit. Um, and cleaning it up as much as I can. Um, I feel in my heart to share that um, my husband and I are temporarily separated. And uh, it has been an interesting uh, year. Very interesting because um, I have been discovering things about myself that I didn't know were in me. And so, um, you know, I have to give God the glory for that because it's not me. <laughs> he is the one literally giving me the strength, you know, to... Um, he's holding me together. I am not doing anything. I have learned to become so dependent on Him I don't, I try, mo for the most part, I try not to do anything without his say-so, his guidance. And so, um, I wanted to give him glory for that, you know, because if it weren't for him, I would have take th taken things in my hands and made a complete mess of it. And I don't want to do that. I am relying on God. And um, if my husband sees this, this is what God is telling me. He fulfilled it the first time. He's going to do it again. This is the second time that he and I are separated. The second time I told him to leave. And for the sake of, you know, privacy, I don't want to get too into it. But adultery, of course, was, um, is the corporate in this, um, in our situation. And so, um, I have forgiven him. I have forgiven him wholeheartedly. But now I'm just, the Lord asked me, he asked me to release him, to let him go so that he can finally finish what he started. I said, okay, Lord, take him. You prom, you are a God who keeps his promises. So take him, Lord. I trust you 100%. And I know that what you're doing, the enemy intended it for be to be evil but you Lord will turn it over to be good and that's a scripture that I've been just leaning on lately and you can find it in Genesis uh, chapter 50 verse 20 it's an amazing scripture along with my, one of my other favorites Exodus 14 14 and so um it's important and this is where I want to jump into it's important to know scripture because the enemy, Satan, knows scripture. Obviously, he was there when it was being written. He saw these wise men being filled, filled just so filled with the Holy Spirit to, to be able to let the Holy Spirit guide their writing, the inspiration and whatnot. And so if the enemy was there, then he knows scripture by heart. He knows it. But the dangers of us not knowing it to its fullest potential for example uh in the book of philippians you know i can do everything through god who strengthens me we have cheapened scripture not just that one but so many other ones we have cheapened it so bad that we take scripture like that and we just apply it to whatever it is that we may be going through and i'm not saying that that's bad but don't cheapen it learn the story in its entirety learn what Peter was going through at that moment at that time I believe it was I'm sorry Paul know what the character went through so so as to understand fully why the Holy Spirit led that person to write that verse you understand what I'm saying so don't don't cheapen it by just sticking to you know a couple of lines read the entire chapter read the entire book so that you can fully gasp, uh, fully grasp what it was that they went through and um, what promise God made them 
and finally was able to fulfill and not able but he did it God is a promise keeper there are over 8,000 promises that he makes not only to the Israelites but to us his adopted children through the blood of Jesus Christ so it's important for us to understand and fully grasp um, what scripture means what the person went through, what their mind must have been thinking, their emotions, what God was doing in the background behind the curtains, you know, because many times we ask God, God, can you help me, strengthen me through this, Lord, and God, I, I pray that you answer my petition. And a lot of times we feel like God isn't doing anything. But if you read in scripture, like in the book of Daniel, Daniel fasted on the first day. Gabriel was on his way to answer his petition but but the but Satan sent his minions and there was a great battle in the third um heavens and it was so um dramatic that the Lord sent down um Michael the archangel and um if you don't know the story I encourage you dig into that book it's such a wonderful book because because it, it's it's an, a great example of God working behind the scene. Praise the Lord. So I encourage you guys, take the time and read that one. That one is a good one, along with many other ones. The book of Samuel, the first and second book of Samuel, the book of Genesis. A lot of people just like, oh, Genesis, the one with the flood in the beginning. It's way more than that, guys. It's way more than that. The Old Testament is getting, is you getting to know God. God is a God of, of love consuming fire a god of promises a god who still forgives even when the children have been you know um blessed with miracles and wonders but yet they forgot just like us god has kept his end in blessing us and and you know manifesting his glory on our behalf but we we forget we forget because when we say to ourselves and even to god god how come i've been praying for you for you to do this for me for so long but i feel like you're not doing it and a lot of times it's because we forget God is working. All you need to do is continue to seek his face because God loves that. We get so wrapped up in worshiping him and just seeking his face and not his hand, his benefits, but just seeking him that we don't even recognize that the blessing is, has already been showering us. And that's because God wants us to love him first and only forever and ever. Okay, so take the time. Put on some music or just sit in silence. Open your book and read it. Because what God has for you, it's only for you. You cannot expect to have a, a preacher or a, a leader or a friend, you know, to interpret what a scripture means. No, read it for yourself. Let the Holy Spirit be the one to tell you what he wants to tell you. Okay? And, um that's what I'm doing um, I praise God because um, in this trial in my life and my husband's life he may not realize it the, every season that we face it is an opportunity for us to get closer to God that's a choice that we make but for God he will never ever stop trying to, pers to pursue us in an intimate way he will never stop and I, I, I humbly am careful using the word trying because God doesn't have to try. He loves us so much. He loves you so much that if he wants you, he will get you. He will get you. Mercy will chase you down and grace will find you. So please, um, I know for me, um, scripture has changed my life because whenever I feel down, whenever I feel anxiety just trying to creep up on me, I have learned you know, to, to, to just speak scripture out loud, because there's a difference, and I, I've heard of so many stories, I can paraphrase it, but when you recite it to the words that the Holy Spirit gave to these men of old, these prophets of old, Satan trembles at the mention and the, and the power of Jesus, so don't only be familiar with the stories, take the time and grasp it, Learn it, study it, memorize it. So when those downtime comes, you know, you can remind yourself, like it says in First Peter chapter 4, verse 12, don't be surprised when you find yourself 
in a in a in an ordeal where it's a fiery trial where you're going through a tough season rejoice because everything that happens to us that where the enemy comes in satan needs god permission so everything that we go through it has a purpose it has a meaning towards it there's a beautiful lesson for it you know and although um i'm not trying to make it seem like i don't have my down days i have my down days and I know that I am entitled to have my down days. But I even rebuke myself for it as well because it's God. It's God. My husband is lost. And that's okay because we've all been there. And so we can all testify. I know I can. And um, I praise God because he rescued me. He saved me. And if he can do it with me, he can do it with you. He can do it with my husband. He can do it with my sisters. God is that great. He is in the business of not only taking the impossible and making it possible, but just radically and dramatically changing lives and restoring what the enemy has tried to take away and broken. He is in the business of healing it, of redeeming it, because my husband is worthy to be saved. He is worthy of God's love. You are worthy of God's love. Okay, so um, I'm gonna let you guys go. I have to continue finishing to uh, sort of remodel my living room. I love you guys so much. God bless you. And if you have any comments, um, any prayer requests, please. I am more and, and willing, able to just take the time and pray for you guys. Okay, so have a great night. And I love you guys. Happy Friday.